We have a brand new feature from Midjourney, and it has indeed delivered more than it promised. This changes everything for us, but let's cut right to the chase. Here's a comprehensive guide on everything you need to know about Midjourney's new personalization feature. So, Midjourney has been working on this personalization feature for a while now. Essentially, this feature creates an image that you can customize to your preference based on your expectation. In other words, you can enhance your user experience right off the bat without needing to go through several tries. But someone out there might be asking, okay, how does this AI get to know what I like? Well, the answer is pretty simple. Midjourney takes into consideration your ratings and likes history, so when you use the feature dash dash p, the bot then chooses what to do based on your past reception to other generations. Let me bring you up to speed with how this works. I should mention that this feature is limited to Midjourney v6, so it won't work for lower versions in case you're wondering. That said, if you were to prompt an apple, you would get the type of generations you would expect from Midjourney like this, right? But watch what happens when I put dash dash p behind the prompt. I get something like this right here. The result is a combination of all the images I have liked and ranked in the past. If you were to do the same, Midjourney would factor in your unique taste and preferences when generating the image. However, if you want to create something similar to mine, it is also pretty straightforward. The main thing you need is the code. Everyone using the personalization feature has this code. You will have to copy my code to generate images similar to mine. But if you want to generate unique images based on your own taste, just type dash dash p and your image will appear alongside the code. One important thing to remember is that the personalization feature is switched off by default. You can turn it on by going to settings. Alternatively, you can add dash dash p. But the personalization setting already allows you to consistently generate personalized images without entering the prompt every time you want to include the feature. I'll leave it at that. Let's now see how we can train this bot to know what we like. Essentially, this bot works by consistent training. The first step is to visit the Midjourney site, alpha.midjourney.com. Here, the model learns in two different ways. It judges your preference based on your liked images on the Explore page or the photos you choose in the rank pairs. According to Midjourney, you need about 200 images ranked for the bot to know what you like. All you have to do is choose between the left and right image on the rank page. Note that you aren't necessarily choosing which is better, instead you are simply picking the ones you prefer. To speed things up, you can use your keyboard to select between the two options. To choose the left image, click 1. For the right, click 2. Also, you should note that there are two buttons above the selection, undo and skip. If you picked an image and then realized later that you preferred the previous one, you could always undo your selection. Also, you can decide to skip if you don't know which to choose. Once you have reached the target number, it is time to try out this new feature. To get started, you only need to empty your prompt and follow it with dash dash p. It will then generate two results, one with the personalized feature and another without it. But that's not all. If you want to get a stunning effect, you will have to type in a seed number. To do that, type dash dash seed and type in a random number between 1 and 4 billion. You can follow the seed number by a million if you wish. Midjourney will ask you to confirm whether you want to generate the prompt. Click yes and voila, you have some amazing images to work with. Please feel free to leave your codes in the comment section if you have some amazing prompts that you would like others to try out. What's even more interesting is that the amazing use case of this feature doesn't stop at making pictures. You could also alter the power as well as control the strength of the personalization. You could make it stronger or less powerful. Here is how. You can use this by setting the stylized value behind your prompt. The value ranges from 0 to 1000. When you generate an image on Midjourney, the default stylized value is 100. However, you can tweak it to match what you want. Here is a look at a superhero cat on Midjourney with dash dash s0. You can see it on 20, 50 and 100 respectively. My style seeps into the images as we crank the stylized value up a notch. 
One important hack I live by is simply learning to trust the process with this bot. Once you let Midjourney get to know you, it can do incredible things with your preference and create unique designs. When working with this stylized feature, I recommend using a stylized value that sits between 50 and 200. You don't have to go much higher. See our code at 200 and see it at 300. You can tell that the increase doesn't make as much of a difference as it did when we started. That's why it is okay to just cap the stylized at 200. After that number, the generations become similar. However, feel free to experiment by all means. You might come across something that sticks out and works for you. You can use your personalization feature with the chaos feature and get exciting results. Why don't we look at an example? Oh yes, for those unfamiliar with the chaos feature, all you have to do to activate it is enter dash dash C and enter a number. You can make the number dash dash C3 for instance, but you could also go higher or lower. See how the model's images drastically change as we move through different chaos levels. Before we go any further, don't get too attached to this feature. The personalization code is bound to change over time. The bot is learning through your likes and rank pairs. The more you use Midjourney and like other generations, the algorithm might morph to include the addition. Midjourney is an evolving platform and they want you to have fun exploring all the tools available. Hence, you shouldn't get attached to your unique code. Back to our chaos feature. This addition can redefine how you relate to the pictures you generate. See the image at chaos value 10 see it again at chaos value 20. We can see fascinating generations. It's recommended that you experiment with high chaos values for more stunning results. You might like what comes up. You could also explore all the different results using various aspect ratios. For instance, here is a personalized generation of a ball. You can look around and choose different custom sizes, which gives you more options to choose from. While custom ratios 1 to 1 and 2 to 3 might not look so different, the image changes as you tweak your prompt to match different custom sizes. Most of our examples so far have been short prompts. If you wonder how this new feature works with a longer prompt, well, here's how it works. Let's look at a long prompt here. You don't get anything special when you generate the typical mid-journey response. However, we see some interesting things when you enter the long prompt and input the dash dash P feature. Now the pictures are more lifelike and carry more flair. The feature allowed me to turn the pictures to look more like images I prefer rather than a bland response. Finally, you can use your personalization feature alongside Style Raw. Look at this prompt, a cute cat sitting beside a king cobra. Here are some of mid-journey's generations. However, we can put our style into the mix by using the personalization feature. But if you want the image to stand out even more, you can add Style Raw. You can include this feature by quickly entering dash dash Style Raw. Please note that this feature is not yet available on the Niji journey. Looking back, what are your thoughts about Midjourney's personalized feature? As Midjourney continues to come up with new and interesting features, I'll be keeping you up to date with the latest. In the meantime, you could share your favorite codes in the comments below so that others can test them. Please smash that subscribe button if you enjoyed this video. And if you missed out on our last upload, no worries, I have it showing on the screen for you to watch.